The world is an interactive place and you can change it. Whatever it is, you can change it. You can change your position in it. You can change the world itself. And I think more often than not, it seems like an impossible task, but you're not changing the whole thing. By changing one thing, you change it all. So I think the simple act, for example, of taking an object, putting it in a different place, people can be conscious of that change. And to them, the world's different. I've made street art for about two years. I first started doing it with Wildlife, who had been doing street art prior to that. Between the two of us, I'd say we do have a good two dozen. I feel like my hands want to be working and building. Cardboard, easy to manipulate, to cut, to shape. You can bend it, you can twist it, you can make almost any shape out of it. It's just a natural medium that I'm surprised more people haven't used, and I think it should be taken more seriously. I think LA is a place where a lot of people come to make it big. There's definitely an allure to the city and what's available out here. Part of the reason I moved from the west side to downtown was that I wanted a bigger workspace. I wanted something that I can build big with. And I didn't even know at the time that I necessarily meant building props and sets and things like that, but I wanted the potential to have that, that I can have a big workspace and do anything in it. And that coincided immediately with making street art because it was one of those incentives to build. And not only to build, but to keep building, to have a limited work schedule of like a week to build a thing, put it on the street, move on to the next project. So I was really churning out art on a full-time basis. After high school, I went to Japan for a whole year. As it got closer to returning, I realized that anything I wanted to do, I should hurry up and do it. And one of those things was to make a movie. So I encouraged all my high school friends to act in this movie, and I made costumes out of paper mache, which I'd never done until that point. We had gun gags, we had sparks, we had Godzilla. We shot the whole thing over the course of maybe four months. I still remember filming the scene. I stuck the cardboard Godzilla on the top of a kid's slide in one of the local parks. I stuck a firework in its mouth so it would breathe fire. And a businessman walked by on his way home from work, and he witnessed this weird white guy filming this flaming Godzilla mouth in the park for no apparent reason. But his world was changed in that sense that he's going home from work, which he's done a hundred times, a million times, but today is different, and his world's a little different. And I think part of the magic of seeing him respond to this out of the ordinary thing and stopping for two minutes to watch it was the beginning of what's become since. Every installation, it's really a matter of seeing the location you want to put something in and deciding what to put there. What I tend to do is walk around and look around my environment and be inspired by it. So if an image of something pops into my head while I look at that field or that wall, that alley, I try to be faithful to that daydream and recreate it. So I think it's simply a matter of being perceptive to the world around you, seeing what you could change to make it special, and then just pursuing that change. So I'm working today at Spectral Motion, uh, which is a, a creature effects house. Working on the millet Calder's End, which is a short by Kevin McTurk, and I built some specialty props for that. It's a half-scale puppet short. So I ended up building some half-scale items for this set. It's the interior of a windmill, just like the windmill pictured here. This is the grindstone, which I built. It goes like this. So this is made of uh, wood. This is foam. It's all just kind of slapped together with extra pieces we had. It's inspiring to see what they make because since I still only use cardboard and wood and essentially simple materials like that, to know that if I keep at it and get into latex and molds and things like that, I can create creatures like this, which is kind of a long-term goal. It'll be fun. It's pretty badass. If you paint a mural, you expect it to last because the nature of spray paint is it tends to stick around. But the fact is that it can get buffed at any time. It can get covered at any time. 
And more often than not, with the way street art is evolving between stickers and wheat pastes and all the different mediums that there are, the time span that each of them lasts tends to be shorter and shorter. But I think that working in mediums like cardboard and paper mache, it takes what could be a two week lifespan of a, of a mural or a wheat paste and it reduces it to just a few days because it's light and easy to remove. You can pick it up, you can toss it out, you can crush it, you can burn it, you can do anything you want to it. So the fact that you've witnessed it within that narrow window makes it more special and makes you appreciate the fact that you saw it while it exists, I think. My goal in doing all of this is just encouraging people to see the world differently, to open their eyes, to look up, not down and to appreciate that the world around them is an interactive place. I don't mind building things I know will eventually fall apart because everything eventually falls apart. If you embrace the idea that nothing lasts forever, that the time that it does last, you appreciate more fully.